This is a video of a talk from Crater Remote Conf given to a live audience in February 2016. This video was made possible by sponsors like Modulus.io, OKGrow.com, and SpaceDojo.com. If you would like to find out more information about upcoming conferences, be sure to go to conf.crater.io and put your email in the form that pops up in the lower left corner. Enjoy the video. All right, so welcome back to the second day of Crater Conf. Super excited. It was pretty awesome yesterday. I uh, had some great talks. If you haven't yet, uh, be sure to go back and you can uh, use those same links and, and rewatch the, the talks so the videos are up pretty instantaneously afterwards for rewatching. Um, and then just another piece of housekeeping. I just wanted to say thank you to um, Modulus and OK Grow. Uh, they sponsored Space Camp and, um, you know, they, I, I just, like, they're sponsors of this by extension, right? Like, the, the idea for this came out of the idea for Space Camp. Um, and I do plan on having a Space Camp 2016, um, and I'll be announcing that later. But, you know, I just, big, big thanks to them. Uh, they, they support a lot of my work. So uh, check them out, modulus.io and okgrow.com, I believe. So um, without further ado, I think uh, everybody knows this guy, Aaron Noda. Uh, he's going to be giving a talk on GraphQL. If you're not familiar, uh, he runs a company called Kadira. Uh, and if you're seriously not familiar with that, like there's probably something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Aeronota. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. 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 Oh. Right. So, how do you start? Like, you, can I start? Right? You, yeah. Just have at it. You can share your screen and. Yeah. 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 Let me share my screen. Okay. Right. Okay. How about now? Lights. Can you see the screen? No, nope, there it's coming in. Okay. All right, we see it. Okay, cool. Like, so, so I was actually thinking about a name for this talk. So I think, uh, so I think GraphQL culture is something quite good with this talk. So basically, I'm not trying to teach you GraphQL with this talk. Like, I'm trying to share my experience with GraphQL. And how I get into GraphQL and how our team's reaction when I introduce GraphQL to Kadira. So, so that's the whole thing behind this talk. And then our, our experience sharing. And then at the end, I'm talking about reactive GraphQL. So that's the, something that MDG is working on right now. So let's get started. Okay. Right. So, okay. I already talked about that. So, so. This is something I actually I shared uh, like a, around seven months back. So actually, this is when uh, like Facebook released the GraphQL spec, and then I shared on Krata like say React GraphQL seems like an overly complex solution. So this is me talking, right? And then because at the time I really don't like GraphQL because I think that's because it's just a spec, so there's no tutorial or kind of thing. And then Slav actually. Uh, asking me, so can you elaborate that you say like that? And actually I gave some answers as well. So you can check this link. I actually just showed Google, uh, GraphQL Krata, and then you can see the screen. And the reason that I hate GraphQL back then, as I said earlier, because so there was no good tutorial. I, I think that's the, that's the reason. And at that time, MDG is, is looking at GraphQL as well. So they are really uh, like interested about GraphQL, and I now we really know like what MGD is doing with GraphQL. So, so that's the thing. Okay, then uh, so sometimes back I started like that, but I, I really don't know how. So when it so when it happens, uh, I think it's uh, when the uh, GraphQL actually so they release uh, the the GraphQL JS library Facebook. I think that's the same time they announced Relay as well. Uh, so that's the reason I think I started looking at GraphQL and I tried to see, so what's this new thing? So that's my, like, that's the place I think I started liking. 
So then I uh, created some apps. So the, they're basically server-side apps. Let's, I, I, I try to create some GraphQL schemas and then try to call it from HTTP servers, then try to console log the output, like just playing around with GraphQL and trying to see what this monster is like. And I really, uh, I really like that, the schema definition and the self-documentations. And, and there are a lot of cool stuff in GraphQL because even though it's so meta, like, so you have to write uh, your own type and do, it's, it's very hacky. Like, it's feel like very hacky. It's not something very simple, like very cool with like media, but I still like that because, so there are, it's really cool. Like that's the reason. And then, uh, so I'll talk about like, up later on and so then i i realized like so the there's a one thing actually graphql is, is missing this is because graphql is a very cool technology but the the, the learning uh, like guides and the tutorials are not very I, I think they are not quite good so that's not quite good mean like they are very comp comprehensive there are a lot of things but they are not uh, like catchy like so you, you need to go through very hard details and so on so I try to uh, create learn GraphQL. So this is online course that available today. You can learn GraphQL, and this is uh, so basically I created to teach my own, own uh, like my they can learn about GraphQL and so on. Then I put it to our, our this web app. Then everyone can learn. And actually, it was a really good one. Like because there are I think uh, right now there are more than ten thousand people. I will learn GraphQL through this course, and I think I think that's really good. So then, uh, so then I we have a good like we to learn GraphQL. Then I I teach everyone at our company to like go through this one and uh, and try to do stuff. Okay, then uh, so then we try to uh, then I will try to use GraphQL at. Our own like APIs, our own, our own with the APIs and so on. So before going into that, then let me uh, talk about Kadira's uh, API because so that's the keep this talk. And actually, there is no public API at Graph of Kadira. So there's a one API actually that talks with the Kadira client side and then the backend. So this is totally on on Meteor. So is based on DDP, so it's 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 focused on the UI component, and there is no like kind of API kind of thing. It's, it's totally it's some media method. So we try to get data and so on. And the thing is, our some of the microservices are using this API as well. So that's kind of bad design because we don't have a centralized API, but so we don't need to rework stuff. That's why. We use this this Meteor UI as the our API as well, and it works at some some point. But then it started to like like started not to work because the have like you might have seen like Kadira alert system is broken. Like there are some false positive alerts kind of thing. So that's because of this. Like then our service going down, the UI app is going down. Our whole 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 other stack also going down because that's not something actually we need to have then they are thinking about way to like use something some alternative so that's the time actually we actually work with graphql and then trying to mix that with our api so let's see how how we do that so so none of the problem is kadira's api is, is based on gdp the problem is there is no documentation because we just build that for the ui and we don't want to document that because I don't know the reason because we don't want to maintain a separate documentation for that. So so it's, it's very poorly documented and it's based on DDP. So you need to have a stateful connection and, it, and it's based on JSON because so the, the reason is JSON, there is no strict schema. So that's, that's one of the problem we have with our API. So then, so we try to think about how to use Kadir API with uh, GraphQL. And then the thing is, so it's self-documented. So with GraphQL, we can have self-documented 
like uh, API. So you can see about this this screen. So here's our the graphical ID. So then we have documentation right inside our like that's a, inside our schema because this documentation is is built into the code. So we don't need to write a not write a documentation our own. And then it has a schema like we have like everything here like so so very simple like so everything is here like it's very easy to use and sometimes it's very hard to like write the types and the schemas but after you have done it so everything is very simple very easy and then so the one of the key idea of a graphql is efficient data paging but actually we are not using graphql for that purpose because we're using web circuits and then the, the claim that graphql is trying to do with efficient data patient is it's not very true because so with web circuit like you can fetch you can call anytime you want and you can get the data upon the circuit and there is no overhead when when, uh, when using multiple http connection because you have a circuit connection with the server and so we don't really care about that. So we don't want that, actually. It's not a feature we are looking at. So the thing actually we are looking at GraphQL is, is self-documentation and the schema. So that's very powerful. And that's what we uh, use with our, our API at Khalil. And then, so we didn't want it to like, like, like convert everything in at Kadira as a like, as a graph, whole GraphQL project. And actually, we don't have resources for that. So it's, it's a small team and we can't spend too much time on like r and projects like this, right? So then, so so we wanted to like change the alert system. It's, it's, it's really broken. So then we need to fix that. So then we thought like, okay, let's build the subset of our API that use the alert system as a GraphQL API. So then we pick some of our subset up API subset of uh, like API stuff from the Kadira UI that I mentioned here, here, and then we convert that into the uh, GraphQL API. So, so it's just a simple wrapper around our existing code, and we didn't uh, like work too hard on uh, on making it. So when we shipped the uh, our API, and it was really great, and then I I, I worked with some of our members at, at Kadira to build this one. And the thing is, everyone like it because so so creating schema is sometimes very kind of hard. But once you creating create a schema, it's very powerful because the the reason why everyone love uh, GraphQL is not just the schema, the, the self documentation. No, 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 that's not because they like GraphQL because of this ID. It's a graphical. So because. So this graphical is a like uh, online ID for GraphQL. So you can actually connect with your own uh, API as well. So that's the reason everyone uh, like started to like GraphQL because so that's really amazing. Like I can show you. So let's have a demo. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we had like Kadira. So, so don't try to go this URL, right? Because you can't even, even though you, it, it's online, yeah, you can access that. Right, this is uh, our app. So this is something like, I'm trying to access. Uh, so let's say, let's clear this one. So I need to get some information about our Kadira app. So let me just copy the our app ID. This is our Kadira UI app ID. Then I need to get some information about my app. So there's a uh, email, there's a field called media app info. And uh, for the app ID, it's auto completing, right? And then I need to get the release. Okay, release. And just right click. Then actually, okay, okay, the reason. So what is, okay, well, there's something I need to put like, this is something with our API, so you don't need to worry about that. And then I can get the, the the release version of the app. So then I need to get the all the packages and I need to get the name. So you can see, so I can get those stuff as well. Because uh, so in order to get this information, in order to use this API, I didn't want it to like look at any documentation. So because it's already there out of completed and it's very, very powerful. And let's say I need to, let's try something else. 
Let's try get the CPU to say that Kadira. It's okay. So that I'm not quite sure what it's, let's say it's CPU. All right. Like maybe a system matrix is uh, the metric type is I think it's CPU. Okay, yeah, it's CPU, and then it's points. Okay, see, like I can get the, all the CPUs at Kadira. This is the time intervals, so you can see like it's very very easy to use. Like so. Then our team actually created these APIs, so they can simply create the API. They don't need to test it with the you know, first. They, they first try to use it this graphical ID and try to see it's working, and then after that they are trying to test. So that's really important, but because that this is very visual, like we can see what's going on there. And the next thing is documentation. So we can attach documentation to each this each, this field, each, these parameters, and everything in GraphQL. So for an example, now I'm looking at the, so let's go back, this is our schema. So we have a root query called Kadira API, and then go to the app info. So it tells what is app info. The app info contains app versions and package versions, kind of stuff. And then here are the arguments, app ID, host, start time, and a couple of stuff. And this, this explanation mark tells that app ID is required. So everything is there. So I don't need to like read any documentation. It's, it's, it's there. So after we have like go through this graphical ID, then I can copy this query and then I, I can use it our own app. So mm -hmm. that's it. Just the, mm -hmm. just the coolest thing like uh, the development experience in GraphQL. And that's really valuable. Okay, uh, let's come back to the uh, slides. Okay, right. So that's that's the reason actually we really like GraphQL. Okay, mm. and then um, the next thing is uh, now we have some of our APIs is working with GraphQL and it's working very well, well for us. And we ship uh, alert system and it's working pretty well right now. And there are some features we need to build, but the as the stability, stability like it's working pretty well. So we don't need to worry about it right now. And then now we are working on a new project called Kadira Genie. It's kind of like a, the support system working with like automated tools. That's that means that we are watching your your app at Kadira twenty four seven, and then we try to see the any anything goes wrong in your app, and then when something goes wrong, then we actually have humans like our, we self, we actually look at that and try to see a problem. So try to see it's, it's actually a problem or not. And then we try to like uh, fix that. So that's Kadira Genie. And in order to do that, we try to use sort of like data modeling, data crunching and so on. I'm sorry. And in order to do that, we use AWS Lambda. So it's Lambda functions. So that means um, you need to use our whole API so inside inside AWS Lambda. So that means like th this is a really good time to convert our whole GraphQL, whole Kadira API into GraphQL. And then we started that one, and everyone everyone really uh, everyone really liked that project because so writing GraphQL schema and trying to see it with uh, graphical is very very nice. And then uh, then. That's the time we introduced the Locker mm -hmm. project, and Locker project is is a like a, uh, it's a, like a, like simple client to access uh, GraphQL data. So it's, it's compatible with the, all the the transport layer comes with Relay and the, all the stuff introduced by Facebook, and it allows you to query uh, the GraphQL APIs using very simple JavaScript library. You can use it on the server client, React Native, and everywhere else. It's not very fancy. You don't have very the cool stuff like really have, but you can still you can still access and, and, and use it. So we use a lock inside AWS Lambda to to get the queries to get data on our, our central API hosted here, api.kadira.io. It's not publicly available yet. So we're trying to give that as well. Okay. Um, so that's Loka, and that's that's how we created that one. That's the reason for that. 
And then the next thing is, so then we are thinking about like, so now we have an API. So our API has all the comp all the stuff that uh, we have implemented on the Meteor API on DDP. And then, so let's try to convert like uh, our Kadira UI to use this this new API, so GraphQL API. So it, it was a, so we try that, like we try that. So it was a very big project because there are a lot of graphs in Kadira UI. And then we need to like we need to write you know, a lot of hours on that, and and the, the real question is, do we really need to do that? Because our UI is working pretty well. It's very like it's, it's not slow. It's, it's working pretty well, and it's not buggy. It's well written, and so there is no reason to like the rewrite it using GraphQL. So then we decide like even though we have. So there are two versions of the API. So we don't need to rewrite it because it's, it's working. Like if something is working fine, then I don't think you need to change it. So that's the thing. Like, so that's then we decided not to change the Kadira UI. It's using the old stuff, but it's working. And all the new stuff will be on GraphQL. And that comes to the Kadira Genie UI. This Kadira Genie UI is the like uh, the, we are trying to like give an interface for the Kadira Genie, and then for that we are considering using it GraphQL. Of course, we are using GraphQL, but we are not sure which version it is. Like, so are we going to wait for reactive GraphQL? Of course, we can't wait because it will like it will it will take about like six months or maybe a year to get the good version. And of course, we don't want to do use relay. And uh, maybe we are using like Loka with the uh, our Meteor GraphQL integration project. So that's that's the way how we gonna start. Uh, and after that, we can of course move into reactive GraphQL when it's coming like when it's working well to us. So that's uh, our, our way of thinking how to use like. So we try to use when you're working like when you're converting. Uh, our API is to use to use GraphQL. We try to see like so try to do a very incremental approach. So we don't want to do like make a really big project like trying to convert everything into GraphQL at once. Like we try to do as a step by step. If something is working, and uh, we don't really want to change it, just keep it as it like like that. So for new stuff, try to use GraphQL, and that's that's the point. And I think if you're using a Meteor app, uh, I think you need to use GraphQL sooner or later, because the, with the reactive GraphQL project that I'm, I'm going to talk about in a moment, like uh, so you so so it seems like Meteor is like trying to replace the current stack the DDB stack with this reactive GraphQL. So so it won't be like uh, like we will be we will have Gra DDB. Maybe another two, three years, but as as a compatible layer kind of thing, and but the so it's like Blaze React kind of thing, and actually the reactive GraphQL is, is built by MDG. That's the difference. Okay. So so how about uh, are we going to like uh, directly jump into the reactive GraphQL stuff or try to answer some questions? So how this gonna work? We can uh, we can do the uh, GraphQL stuff if you want. Okay, okay. And then we can or take some we questions. Maybe can answer some questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, there's there's quite a few questions if you want to start with those. I think we can uh, uh, go with some questions and and then uh, try to come back into the reactive GraphQL. Okay. Is so it? um, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds good. Um. Okay. Ben asked, "How does GraphQL interface with the database?" Uh, yeah, then uh, you have to use, actually. There is no so you can actually use any kind of uh, npm module to interact with your database. There is no like uh, restriction on that. So it's yeah, you can use it any 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 database any data source you have. Well, how do you like hook that up to make it work, right? Okay, uh, so shall I show you some example? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, I think let's go to learn graph. You gotta, and of course, yeah, yeah you got to share your screen again. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. I closed it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. How about now? Yep. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. This is so we have a question using graph. Okay. No, oh, okay. This one. All right. So let give me a second. I need to log into the <laughs> this one. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Here's an example. Like so. Okay. Not limitations. Okay. Look at this one. So here, like they're trying to create a like a cool authors feel like. They're trying to get authors using this query. And in order to go get that, you need to get a resolve function. Inside this resolve function, we can use any kind of API. Like it doesn't need to be a, like direct database connection. It could be anything. You need to return some data. So here I'm trying to access the authors collection, it's a MongoDB collection. And I'm trying to find some some data and then and make it to array and I get the, all the data and return it. Likewise, you can actually you can actually uh, use any kind of maybe it's a REST API, maybe it's a, it's a SQL database or anything. So you can use it any kind of data source and simply return it. So that's how GraphQL is. And there are and I if you don't really understood this one, try to use this course and I think you will get an idea how to how to interact with any kind of Get us off. Okay, I think it's clear, right? Okay. Um, yeah, that was a good answer. Okay. What uh, What are the use cases where GraphQL would make the most sense? Huh. So GraphQL, like at, at right now, so GraphQL is, is good for like uh, if you. It's, it's really good for everything, right? Like, there is, so if you need to like make a, uh, like create a, some, get some data from the server, you can actually use GraphQL to create an like interface. So like, like a boundary between your client and the server and, and make some interface and you can get some data. But right now, you, if you want to do like reactive stuff, you want like, like to do the thing that we, we, we work with them Meteor. So, so that's not something you want to do right now because the, the reactive version of GraphQL is not available. Even there is the Facebook has released some blog posts about how to do subscription in GraphQL, and it's totally different from the right the subscription we have today. Uh, so, even though so it's just a blog post, there is no solid implementation on that. So, I think uh, so if you want to get some data and write some stuff to the data. So you can use uh, GraphQL right now. It's really, really good. But if you want to like uh, make your application reactive and you need to wait uh, a bit. So. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, we'll take a, one from uh, David here. Um, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it a little bit. I'm gonna say, you know, you, you showed us a slide where you said, you know, you posted on Crater and you said this this looks over complicated and too hard. Like, what was the hardest part for you about learning or actually starting to use GraphQL? Okay, uh, the hardest part for me to like um, the GraphQL query syntax is fine. It's, it's fine. The hardest part is to try to uh, try to create the schema. So creating a schema is really complex because it's so so. With Meteor, like you can simply publish a cursor and it will it will be available to the client. But in order to use GraphQL, you need to you need to define some type on the server, and it's not simple. Like so you have to do something, and I think that's the kind of barrier uh, we are having right now. And there are some projects like you can use like there are some there are some there are some way to use access. Mongoose schemas. So the Mongoose is a ORM for MongoDB. So you can use Mongoose schemas. You can convert them into like uh, into GraphQL schema right away. And there are some other projects to do that with. Like uh, there's another one called SQLize, I think. And there's a 
another node is a ORM. So there are some projects out there. So they're not much stable. So they they work, right? And and they're not using, so it's not widely used. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. So there are some ways. And I hope uh, with uh, with Reactive GraphQL from MDG, and they're planning to work on something very simple to use. Yeah, I think. Nice, yeah. Me too. I hope they, I mean, they always put out a good API for something. So I have strong yeah, hopes yeah. for that. Uh, here, I'm going to switch back so people can see us. All right. Uh, another one from David. He's killing it on the votes today. Uh, when moving from straight Mongo queries to GraphQL, what has been the biggest improvement as far as data architecture or structure of your apps? Yeah. Okay, I can answer this. Like, I really answer this question because so right now, so when you're working with Meteors, like so the server side and client side code are uh, code is stays the same. Like you write your methods, uh, the the database code on the both server and the client. So actually, when gra- working with GraphQL, there is a clear separation between the server and the client. So that means server side developers can and can work on the backend. They can do anything with the backend. So if right now our our app is using MongoDB, and then let's uh, let let it use something else. So then it's simply like trying to so plug that into the schema, and they don't need to talk to the even talk to the client side developers as well. So client side apps stay the same, and they can change the backend. And the, and the same thing, you can change the client side app to use anything, and you don't need to. Worry about the backend, and that's the the benefit we are getting with GraphQL. It's it's not like a it's like a benefit GraphQL has. Like it's not it's, it's something, but it 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 forces us to do that. So that's that's the real cool thing about GraphQL. Right. Yeah. I I mean it's really interesting, right? Like I think that was actually a goal of DDP, but they maybe didn't like it's it's been too closely tied to uh, Mongo when they were getting started, and and so it didn't. Didn't quite come out that way. Yeah, I think the, the, the problem with DDP is not the problem. Like in DDP, it's not there is no schema. Like so, this is just a protocol. Like so, the protocol and the schema is, is two different things. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Good point. All right. Uh, so Elijah asks if for meteor minimal viable products, but blah, 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 that's a mouthful. Uh, apps that are fairly small scale, would you recommend migrating to using GraphQL instead of Meteor methods? Uh, or does GraphQL make more sense for uh, large scale apps? Okay, uh, it's depend like it's depend on how you how you define MVP. So if you're trying to do a prototype, try to try to build your app within like within a day, and GraphQL may not be the solution. Uh, but if you're trying to build the MVP, that that's work. Let's let, trying to like try to make it solid. Trying to make it a future proof that you are trying to improve it, uh, working it. And I think GraphQL is a good choice. But still, uh, we don't have reactive GraphQL version. Like it's not cool. Uh, it's kind of uh, like just reactive GraphQL. And that, that's a that's the thing you need to like. I think uh, it, it's safe to wait another six months. Until the MDG is working with the, uh, they complete the their version of GraphQL. Uh, and right now, yeah. So if you're not not compatible with uh, with GraphQL right now, and try to use it with the MVP, especially with the like app, app like especially the client server app, and I, I don't recommend to use it if you're not compatible with. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would probably echo those sentiments as well, right? Like, if you're building an MVP, chances are you're trying to find product market fit, and you shouldn't waste yeah. time on, you know, trying trying to learn something new and implementing. It, it feels like you almost have to implement that, like you're implementing that schema, right? Which is, um, you have to have a bunch of. Um, Wow, this voting is going crazy. <laughs> uh, you have to implement a bunch of extra queries, maybe. A little extra boilerplate. Yeah, no, no. yeah. I think uh, so. I need to talk on that because the writing the schema it's not not much complex. Like if you know how to do it, like the, 
if you learn it correctly, like writing, writing a schema is not good because so so when you talk about that, like product, we don't have like, have a very big backend, like so we don't have couple of like couple of types, couple of schemas, and working on that one um, like around like few hours, maybe few days is is, is is something okay, like. But the problem with uh, with GraphQL right now is then you need to use Relay uh, or maybe some kind of HTTP stuff. So there is no like data binding stuff. There is no good uh, like reactive stuff. There is no way. So working with mutation with Relay is hard. So there are some problems with that. It's not about defining the schema and how to use it with the client side app. So that's that's the thing I I want to tell. Yeah. All right. Um, wow. Wow. Okay. Everybody's voting on this one. I don't know. I feel like someone's hacked the voting system, perhaps. Um, <laughs> so we'll take we'll take Darren's question here. Uh, this may be answered later in the talk or on learnGraphQL.com. But is the idea that GraphQL replaces meteor methods in subscribing to collection cursors, for example, using the quick example you showed? querying answers, uh, would I wrap that call in a Meteor publish on a server and return the results? So I think maybe yes. this is alluding to the fact that reactive GraphQL, GraphQL will hopefully answer yeah. a lot of these types of questions. Yeah, then uh, I think it's time to work on the reactive GraphQL like, like part of my, my slides, right? Then I'll, we can come back to the, these questions after that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I I had a quick question. Like, do you implement authorization at the GraphQL level then? Uh, yes. Uh, to our API, like, so it's, you don't have a GraphQL level authorization because it's it's a simple HTTP uh, uh, basic auth authentication to this one, and so and then there are very simple way to do that. So let me let me share a link that you can uh, learn more about GraphQL stuff, GraphQL authentication. It's really fairly simple. Simple. So it's something uh, similar to what you do with Meteor these days. A GitHub uh, Meteor data. Give me a minute. Sure. sure. Yeah, so if anyone watched Pete's talk yesterday, he he showed how, you know, you can't, like the publication is where a lot of security happens in media right now. And uh, I think whenever you're publishing data, you need to think about who has access to that data. And that's why I kind of asked that question. Okay, then, uh, so uh, I'm going to add a, add a comment to this this question. Um, okay, this just simply paste the URL. You can you can go there uh, and see how how to do authorization with uh, GraphQL. Uh, so uh, that's the thing. Okay. Okay. So it's very simple, right? There are some examples. There's a blog post. Then you can refer to how to do that. Well, uh, where did I don't see the link? Where'd you put it? Ah. Uh, to the you want to put question. it in the chat or something? No, it's not the chat light. It's the oh, question. the comment. Okay. I see. Com comment. Uh, okay. Yeah. Makes sense here. We'll put it here too. There you go. All right. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then let's go back to the presentation. Shall we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, let me share the screen. Okay, can you see the presentation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So this is reactive GraphQL. So the basically uh, the reactive. So let me let me zoom in this bit. Okay, it's not working. Okay. So reactive GraphQL is basically so here we have two clients, client A and client B, and the client A actually. Uh, it's creating a GraphQL query. And then he actually asked for some data to that query from a server. And let's say it's a simple blog post. And we can get that blog post and, and see comments. And then another client, and he had a comment. So we call it a mutation. 
and then that command automatically appeared on this this graph given then this blog post then i don't have to write any any code to get that uh, code specifically so that's reactive graph queue the that's the the, the version we have right now with meteor like uh, but with graphql then you can use any kind of data source you can use like uh, mongodb maybe a rest api maybe a sql you, you can actually use any kind of data source you want and there is no restriction so that is reactive graph it's very powerful and and i wrote a blog post you can learn more, more about this and, and there's a like a like specification kind of thing on, on the media data repository and then you can read about these things very, very in a, in a detailed manner. So, 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 then it's come to deploying uh, the reactive GraphQL server, and it's very interesting. And the thing is, so, so I'm not going to to talk about too much details here. So, we have a data it's called App Server. So, App Server is, is simply exposing a GraphQL uh, GraphQL schema. So, it, it may be a simple Node.js application. So there are some some special uh, drivers that you need to access to you need to use to get data and actually you can use all your own uh, data source as well then then you need to do some simple things to to tell some some, some notification do some some stuff that's sort of simple like it's not like writing a like a driver like to the meteor right now in order to create a like database driver to Meteor right now it's, it's a very very complex stuff and we really, really hard to do but writing a database driver to the, this reactive graphql thing is very simple so that's that's the that's the that's the cool thing about this app server so it's simply stateless like that means you can can simply scale this uh, uh this uh, apps uh, app server without worrying about interconnections and so on so, so this is really simple and there's another server we call it invalidation server validation server that's this server actually uh it's it's kind of like a document tracker so it, it keeps track of the the current version of the document and so on and then this this uh, and that that version is already available on the client as well so that means client actually asking this the invalidation server every time so is my the version of the document updated or not is that the same if that invalidation server say this is your document has been updated and then i i can fetch that document again from the uh my app server so that's how things happen so there is no cache in uh inside your application uh application server that means i mean the cache in right now with meteor all the data available on your every client on on your app is is, is cached on your on your server as well but with this one you don't need to make a cache you don't need to have a merge book kind of thing so it's, it's totally uh, the client side client driven stuff it's very cool and then the cool thing is this invalidation service is you don't really need to care about this as well so let's say so when you're developing this one so you can have an in-memory version of invalidation server so that means that comes with the media tool and you know it deploying this one actually uh, galaxy can offer a like, hosted version of invalidation server so that means you don't need to worry about this invalidation server anymore and then the thing is you need to work is just create your schema so it's scaling uh, the, the reactive graphql apps will be very simple so that that's a very cool thing to see right this is the stuff like the whole stuff with the reactive graphql i just copied this diagram from the mdgs like spec so here we have like so let's there are a few parts so this this the, the red and the green area is the server side part and this blue and the orange part is the client side part so they're using a relay as well so they're using internal relay to uh, to do the some caching storage and kind of thing you know, on the client side and the same thing this this graph reactive graphql is 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 uh, like we will level independent you will be able to use this reactive graphql with angular react place or something else so it's so it's very cool but right now relay is very very closely tied to uh, react so we can't really use it with any other stuff 
but with react to graphql you could use it anything and now so you can use any any kind of router maybe it's a react router or maybe it's relay router you can use this flow router so that's just very really cool and here you can see that this flow router is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a blow it's, it's a dark area the reason for that one is because uh, MDG is trying to like this, uh, implement some server-side rendering uh, component to as well. So that means they're really thinking about like community, like like our our, our things are how we talk and these days. Because so we really want uh, server-side rendering, and now MDG is, is thinking about that as well. And that's really good approach, and I really like that. And on the server side, we have the, the app server here. Then, sorry, this is the analyzer. This is the app server. It's, you can see it's a, except a, a Express GraphQL here. This is an NPM module, and there are some other stuff. And you can use anything SQL, Mongo APIs, so anything. That, that's it. So, this is the reactive GraphQL. And I really think this will be a game changer. Uh, and this will be not only for media app developers, you can use uh, with uh, React Native, you can use with uh, any kind of JavaScript app. I hope uh, there'll be projects to use this one with the uh, native apps as well. I think that's that's the goal with uh, MDG, maybe later on. Yeah. Okay, okay, then, then let's come back, let's come back to the questions. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, can you hear questions? There we go. My mic was muted. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what kind of Avadis asked? What kind of infrastructure is recommended for optimal GraphQL performance? Uh, infrastructure. I think uh, so. At the end of the day, like uh, the GraphQL is, is simply a Node server. So, if you can. Uh, Host Node.js on apps on I think nearly anywhere, so there is no recommended kind of like uh, infrastructure. So it's you can host anywhere. Yeah. yeah, and I mean you know the the interesting thing is you see people like um, Mongoose or RethinkDB like implementing GraphQL so that it'll work like out of the box, like you'll be able to use Mongo or uh, something like that, right? Yeah, I think uh, about rethink DB. Uh, I think that's not going to happen. So, so they, oh, really? I, I think they, they, yeah, they try to like they wanted to use like they want to expose the uh, their API to the uh, client apps. So that means uh, you don't want to like work with the server side. You can simply connect your client apps with the React uh, rethink DB databases, and then. They were thinking to use GraphQL, but then, then they later realized like GraphQL is, is too simple for them. Like they have much complex stuff to do. Like I mean the API wise, there's so everything DB is very, very complex with the API. I mean not complex, it's complex than other way. Like they have a lot of features. And then GraphQL is not an API for that one. So that's so they I think they won't work with that to implement uh, GraphQL support back into the uh, or rethink DB. All right. Uh, so Pete Corey, hacker extraordinaire, asked, from my limited knowledge of GraphQL, I'm worried about opening up the door to creating really inefficient queries, repeated N plus one queries, etc. Is that a real problem? Or are there ways of dealing with that? Um, what do you mean by inefficient queries? So, okay. I, I, well, so based on what I saw, you showed like you, you're writing the resolver, right? Like the, the yeah. schema part of okay. it. Okay. So I, I would imagine that that's really on the developer to maybe be careful, right? Okay. Uh, I think, uh, okay. That's the, that's normal with the, like, GT as well. So the I think it's it's very, very easy to write the that means uh in resolver. Okay, I think Peter shared in some some example on the chat. Uh, let's wait. Okay. Where each oath is another query. Got it. Uh, okay, okay. That means he's trying to okay, okay. Like that means yeah, and, and nesting. With, uh, with nesting. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, so. 
that's the thing actually we need to have a, like some kind of database driver to do implement caching and and, and some of the stuff and, and there's a project called uh, data loader from facebook and, and that do some caching stuff and of course uh, this is where actually application performance monitoring comes in then uh, actually we can tell you some stuff and how how to how to see show you that uh, rather tour is actually not working well and then you can optimize and then the cool thing is mdg is working uh, trying to like implement like a performance api direct into the reactive graph view then you can actually see uh, other problems in in your in your queries and then you can simply fix that then you don't need to use kadira for that and maybe we will have some tools but then it will be available into the, the into the uh, tech to graph ql as well i think that's that's the answer right now i think okay all right uh so robert asks do you know of any bad parts of graphql tell us all the mud the mm. dirt okay uh the bad part of Gra <laughs> graphql is right now is is mutations and uh, trying to create a mutation and i mean to uh, like trying to like do optimistic updates and it's really uh, it's kind of hard to do it right now because you need to you need to do, because with optimistic updates and uh, and that mongodb right now we have it's very, very simple like i mean simple is how to for us it's very simple all the hardest part is done by the uh, the mini mongo and the all the stuff in client side and the mm. mutations uh, with graphql is with optimistic updates and that's kind of not very cool and i hope uh, that is also going to fix with the reactive graphql project from mtg and i hope that will fix but right now the mutation is a really bad part even in in relay so you have to write a lot of code to do that all right and then the last question is would you recommend using graphql with event sourcing it looks like a very good to implement a sort of cqrs architecture uh and actually i'm not familiar with event sourcing and cqrs so i really can't answer that but i think it's something into reactive programming right i'm quite not sure yeah i don't i i haven't looked at it either uh i i just first heard of it a couple of days ago uh they were talking about it in the media or mentor chat room all right here you go someone okay. link to a martin fowler post uh, comment query I, responsibility uh, yeah. segregation i think i think that's the topic i am i need to see see you are i have seen this term before i have an actually actually go through that one unfortunately i can't answer this one I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. All right. Uh, well, we'll call it a day there. Um, and uh, we'll take okay. a quick break and we'll come back in about nine minutes and we'll start with uh, Carl's talk. So uh, I'll post a link so. and, and see you guys in a few minutes. Thanks for uh, the talk, Aaron Oda. Like, uh, I'll give you okay. a okay. clap here. Okay. Awesome. Since we can't hear everyone Thank else's you. clap. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. This video has been a Space Dojo production. You can click the Learn More button to find out more about us at spacedojo.com, or you can click the Subscribe button to get notified about new videos we put out each week. Thanks for watching.